coming up, but be patient with us. <laughs> Our next speaker is Charles Whalen from Geneva, a longtime resident of the Finger Lakes region, and in the recent past, he was a candidate for Congress in New York's 23rd Congressional District. Thanks so much, Rachel, although I'm not so sure that you uh, put me in the best position having to follow such fabulous students. Uh, is there any way to raise this up the tad, or can I hold the mic? Well, no, I got it. No, you got to tape. Okay. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. Thanks so very much. So yes, yeah, so I'm Charles Whalen, and I live in Geneva, New York, where I live with my wife and a daughter that we raised uh, here in this region. But I'm not here to talk about my daughter right now. I would like to speak about some other people's daughters. The first is Anna Grace. Six-year-old Anna worked for days on a book of drawings. When she finished, she gave it a cover, stapled it, and wrote, Anna's Flower Book, From Anna to Dad. But it was time for school, so Anna had to leave it in her playroom so she could present it to her dad after school. She never did. Anna's dad found the book the night that she was shot and killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School, along with 19 other young children and six adults. In Colorado, 16-year-old Kelly Fleming was a lot like Anna Grace. She too was working on a book, and often she went to the library at school to do that work. But in April of 1999, that's where she was shot in the back and killed at Columbine High School in a mass shooting that killed 13 people and injured over 20 others. In Florida, 14-year-old Carol Loughran, her passion was dance. She was one of 17 people shot and killed in Parkland on Valentine's Day. Shortly after Valentine's Day, my own daughter gave me a call to say that she's engaged to be married. Anna, Kelly, Kara, they'll never make that call. Not to their mom and dads. Neither will Veronica and... Um, Veronica Sullivan, she was six years old when she was shot and killed in a movie theater, along with 12 other people and 70 people were injured. And one-year-old Noah Grace Holcomb won't even attend elementary school. She's one of 26 people who were shot and killed last year on my own daughter's birthday at the First Baptist Church in Southern Springs, Texas. Anyone who says that mass gun violence is not a public health and public safety issue, is simply out of touch with reality. <laughs> Let's look at gun violence in schools alone. Since Columbine, nearly 200,000 students from close to 200 primary and secondary schools, I notice you have a list of many of them right there, have experienced shootings on their campus. It's time to say enough. That's what this rally is about. That's why I wanted to be here to thank you for speaking out and to encourage you to keep fighting. The time for sensible, practical action to reduce gun violence is long overdue. Yeah. <laughs> and to those who want to appoint to the Constitution, to the right to bear arms, I say yes. Let's look at the Constitution. Its preamble is awfully clear. The central purpose of the Constitution is to, and I'm quoting now, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. Anna Grace's family deserves some domestic tranquility. Kate Fleming and her family deserved someone to protect their common defense. The survivors of the Parkland deserve the promotion of their general welfare. And today, by gathering here, we all demand action to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and for our posterity. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> this movement has already made a difference. For years, Congress refused to let the CDC conduct research on gun violence. That changed yesterday. The, 
And just yesterday, the Attorney General announced that the Justice Department proposes to ban bump stocks. Yesterday, after years of inaction, on the eve of this march, just a coincidence? Absolutely not. But much more is needed. Congress gave the CDC the okay to do gun violence research, but in a $1.3 trillion spending bill, how much did it pour toward that research? Zero. Zero. Oh. And the Justice Department's re reversal on bump stocks is just the latest proposal from an administration that's known for its reversals. <laughs> we also need an immediate action on what the nonpartisan group that Gabby Giffords organized calls nine lethal and legal devices that could be the next bump stocks. And we're long overdue for a comprehensive system of background checks, bipartisan bills that have stalled in Congress for years. And that's why we also need a new Congress. Congressman yeah. Tom Reed. Yeah. A sponsor of the bill to overturn the SAFE Act says he worries that people often run to the gun control issue after mass shootings. Instead, Reed often follows such shootings with his reaffirmation that he's a firm believer, and I'm quoting here, reaffirm, firm believer of the right to bear arms, and that he'll, quote, fight for the Second Amendment. We need to replace Tom Reed and his colleagues with people who will fight for us. For the reason we have a Second Amendment. I recently ran for Congress. My campaign pushed hard on these issues. I'm convinced that it can be done in a way that works with the Constitution, recognizes the Second Amendment, and respects the rights of our citizens, including those of us who choose to have hunting rifles. All of us, all of us, need to push for steps that reduce gun violence and for representatives to take a strong stand. In addition to Gabby Gifford's group, there's another group that's doing great work, and I see the signs from them here, Mums Demand Action. I urge you to get involved with both groups. People often say that we get the government we deserve. That's not true. <laughs> we get the government we demand. Keep demanding, thank you. Yeah.